supporting you in your dog parenting journey. The Dynamic Dog Owner with Debbie Potter. Hello and welcome to another edition of The Dynamic Dog Owner. So today we are going to be looking at how you can ensure you get the best from your training sessions with your dog. Now, obviously we know training is important. Um, Training is a really big part of life with your dog. Without realising your dog or your new puppy is learning every minute of every day. But it does help if we set aside dedicated time to train. Whether that be obviously at home or at a training class or by watching online videos. Now you've booked your class, you've set aside some time in your diary, you've already invested time and money. You've prepared your treats, you've made sure your dog's raring to go, energetic, and then your session doesn't go well. It's easy to feel deflated, despondent, fed up and go, what's the blimmin' point anyway? What we need to look at is why our training session doesn't go well and how the human end of the lead, so us and our mindset, is actually affecting our dog and their progress. Because you and your dog are a partnership. This isn't attending training classes or training your dog. It's not about the dog needs training. It's about you and your dog learning to understand each other, to develop a strong relationship and to understand what makes the other one tick. This is a relationship. You and your dog learning together to learn what the other one likes to do, what the other one wants them to do, to learn how to communicate, to learn how to be the best team you can be. And many problems do come down to us, the human end of the lead. And it's inevitable. We are 50% of this relationship. We have to take 50% responsibility. We are the human. We have more emotions than our dogs do. A dog's emotional capacity can be likened to a two-year-old. So they do feel many, many emotions, but they don't have the complex emotions that humans do. Dogs live in the moment and they see things for what they are. They see direct consequences to actions. They feel happiness. They can also feel stressed, anxious and worried. They can feel sad. We have a lot more complex emotions. So in our lives, I'm sure many people resonate, we're busy. We have a lot to fit into our lives. You know, there's always the jokes about the dogs where, you know, I want to come back as a dog. All they have to do is sleep all day. They don't have bills to pay. They're as happy as anything that's great. That's their part of the relationship. We're busy. We're having to work, cook dinners. If you've got kids, you're having to get them wherever they need to go. We get worried by the state of the world. We get worried by bills and um, families and relationships that we have. We get stressed, we get emotional. There's a lot of daily baggage that we hold with us every single day. And often we're just used to it. (laughs) It's it's what life is. Um, And we don't necessarily recognize how it is affecting everything in our lives including how we are with our dogs so I don't know if any of you have heard about the spoon theory or the emotional bucket um some people prefer one analogy some people prefer the other a lot of people talk about the spoons theory with people I personally don't like it I prefer the emotional bucket but so spoons theory is about um how much everyone can cope with each day so The spoon theory says each person, for example, gets given 12 spoons at the beginning of their day and each activity they undertake is worth a spoon. And when you have used all your spoons, there's none left. So, for example, um, let's take, um, you know, an average day at work for an adult. You know, you've got 12 spoons. You get stuck in traffic and you get a little bit fed up. You lose a spoon. You have a busy, stressful day at work. You have meetings. You're struggling to meet deadlines. Um, your boss is a bit annoyed with you, whatever. That might take up three spoons. So you've got four gone already. Um, you then go to the shop at lunchtime and they haven't got your favourite sandwich. So you get a little bit peed off. Another spoon gone. You then get stuck in traffic on the way home from work. Another spoon gone. 
All these things happen throughout the day. And by the end of the day, you've got no spoons left. You've got no energy. You go, So you get fed up. You go, oh, I'm just done now. I've, I can't be bothered to do anything else. I just need to chill out and do nothing. Um, I don't have any energy. I don't have any spoons left for the rest of my day. That's one analogy. It's similar, but I prefer the bucket. Um, so for me, your emotional bucket, everyone's got a bucket inside them that they can hold their stress in. Um, every time a... Um, stressful event happens water gets filled into your bucket um and different events are worth different amounts of water so um i have actually got some water right here so i can do a little demo if you're watching on youtube i will show you what i mean um and this might get messy <laughs> we'll see so i have got an empty bucket so an empty cup this is my emotion for the day um now today i woke up a little bit late um and I didn't get here to work as early as I wanted to so wow a little bit of stress goes in my bucket um now then say for example um some clients cancel um I don't get as much done as I wanted to do a little bit more stress goes in the bucket um then um I get stuck in traffic going home a bit more stress um I go to cook dinner haven't got the ingredients um that I want bit more stress um i then for whatever reason get annoyed with my family they do something to wind me up get into a little bit of a row or more stress you can see that my bucket's getting full and full and full and full every stressful event happens eventually this cup is going to fill up and it's going to spill everywhere and these are our emotions all of our emotions um when we overreact when we have a reaction so we lose our temper we get cross with somebody um our emotions are spilling out of our bucket we can't hold them anymore same thing happens it's exactly the same for dogs obviously we talk about human stresses because we understand them a little bit more but dogs are exactly the same so this could be you know your dog um hearing a sound seeing something that scares them um a person um a dog too close to their environment a workman next door and then eventually our dog goes, I can't cope with anymore. And they react or they get cross. That's what's happening. Their emotional bucket fills. So it play, applies to people. It applies to dogs just the same. Um, we all have daily baggage and stresses and worries that build up inside us. And eventually will bubble over the top when we can't hold any more emotions or when we've run out of energy, our spoons disappear. So when this comes to training... We're often rushing to cram in a planned session. So if you've booked a class, it tend to be at a weekend or of an evening. You might have just come home from work. You're already stressed from day at work. You rush into your training class a little bit late because you had to drop out of the traffic again. Um, at home, you've set aside 10 minutes, but then the phone rang or the washing machine didn't finish. You, you rushed. You cram in that planned session. You do it quickly. And any emotional baggage or stress from the day or how we're feeling, we bring to that training session with our dog or we bring into that practice session at home when you're practicing for five, 10 minutes. We don't mean to, but inadvertently, all of that stress that we hold and emotions we hold from our life come into our training session. They affect our training session because it's how we're feeling and we project it into our dog and into our training session. And this could be because we put really high expectations on them because of emotions. So, for example, you know, say you're going on holiday next week and you're worried because it's somewhere you want to let your dog off lead because they pull a lot. Um, but they are not trusted off lead. You're still trying to work on the lead work. You go, oh, I want to let them off because we're in the countryside, but they're not going to come back. And I don't want them on the lead because they pull we then put high expectations on that we need our training session to work and I need it to work now because I'm going on holiday next week. So our emotions then mean we put high expectations on our dog. Obviously, the things we're working on are important. They affect our daily life. Um, and parts of walks with our dogs are an important part of our daily life. So naturally, our anxieties or worries we feel about the real life situation will get projected and tag into our training time with our dog when we're wanting to work to improve things so 
This means we enter into our training session in a negative state of mind. We're highly emotional. Um, we've got lots of expectations. We don't mean to, but that negativity and our emotions affect the success of our training. And it seems obvious, but if you're in a, what we call a brain funk, so you know, you're not quite feeling right, or you're a bit annoyed, or you know, you're just feeling a little bit bleh, your session isn't going to go well. <laughs> it's, it's inevitable. We know that mindset is a really, really important thing. And often situations can be negative or positive just simply by how we look at a situation. Um, and that's obviously because we're driven by emotions. We can be trigger stacked. So trigger stacking is basically when you've got your cup full of water and you've got all these emotions that have filled up your emotional cup and you can't really take much more. So it's not necessarily about what's happening in the here and now. It's what's happened throughout the earlier stages of the day that has built your emotions up. We put ourselves under more pressure. In turn, we put our dogs under more pressure because of the expectations um, of what we want to achieve in real life. We set really unrealistic goals and expectations. We're then a bit short tempered. We get cross. We become negative. Oh, my dog can't do this. And then we obviously become a little bit emotional because there's a lot going on. We then take it out on our dog and say, oh, my dog's stupid. They can't do this. We feel rubbish. We feel demotivated. What was the point of having a training session anyway? And this is all down to our mindset. So what we're going to look at today is how we can avoid this. How can we change our mindset and make sure that we get the best from our training session? So first of all, planning your training sessions is really important, I find, because it helps you set aside that dedicated time. So for example, as you may have heard me say in previous episodes, Thursday night is when I take all my dogs training and a Wednesday morning is when they have one-on-one -on -one training walks with me. Um, so they don't get them very often, the one-on-one -on -one training walks, because I have three dogs, uh, two kids, a busy lifestyle. Um, it's the best I can do um, to give them one-on-one -on -one walk time. Uh, it's better than nothing. Um, so setting those clear dates and times in your diary will help you to A, know you've got focused time. You can make sure that you kind of almost get in the zone beforehand. Um, so clearing your head beforehand and helping you will help you to stay focused um, and working on your goals. So setting those realistic goals and trying to not see your dog in a negative. So before well, you've got your direct training session in your diary, you know it's going to happen. So it doesn't have to be long. That's the key. It can be 10 minutes. It doesn't have to be an hour. It doesn't have to be um, you know, half a day of training. If you've only got 10 minutes to set aside, 10 minutes is great. So set aside 10 minutes for a training walk or 10 minutes. If you can do an hour's class, great. Give yourself an extra 10 or 15 minutes before that class. Write down anything you're worried about. Get it out of your head. So you could make a little list. I'm worried about this. I'm worried about that. I'm worried about this. I've got all these things to do. If you're anything like me, you've got like a perpetual to-do list going round and round and round in your head get a bit of pen and paper and write down all of those thoughts that are in your mind all the things you've got to try and remember so that they are written and out of your mind you may everyone's different you may find that taking a minute or two to just relax to almost meditate listen to some calming music will help clear your mind some people may prefer listening to like heavy metal or something really really good dance tune and having a good dance about to get out their emotions you might like to shout or do some boxing whatever it is to get out your emotions so that you're clearing them away out of your mind before you want to focus on your dog you can then set out a goal so what in this 10 minutes or in this one session today what's my goal what do i want to achieve you may find Having a cup of tea. I'm just thinking having a cup of tea with a book helps you to chill out. Um, just to clear your mind. However you do it, everyone's different. So however you want to clear your mind before your session, take 
two or three minutes just to do that, to meditate, to dance, to shout, write down your worries, whatever it is for you, get them gone so that when you start your training session, you're already in a clear state of mind. Write down your goal for your session for that day and make sure it's a small goal. So in 10 minutes, we're not going to achieve much. If you're attending puppy classes or training classes or you've got like a a program, pick one exercise. So for today, I want to work on sitting with distractions. That's all I want to work on, nothing more. You've then got one small achievable goal that you can work on. You can focus all of your attention on that one goal. Then it's a case of entering the zone, um, training zone. Trying to think when you're with your dog in that training session, whether it be for an hour, whether it be for 10 minutes, focus on that goal, your dog and nothing else. Turn your phone off. Nothing worse. Phones are brilliant. You know, phones are great, but they're so distracting. I've recently taken a big step and I've turned off my notifications because I'm reading a very good book at the moment um, about how to make better habits for yourself. Um, And I realised that a cue to, for me getting distracted and for me to be procrastinating tasks was that my notifications on my phone go off all the blimmin' time. And I've turned them off. So now I don't know if someone's WhatsApp messaged me. I don't know if someone sent me a Facebook message or uh, liked my post or anything else. I'm not getting distracted by it. And when I want to check my phone, I can check them all. So I'm in control rather than the phone cueing me to get distracted. If you're the same and your phone's always ping, 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 as most people's are these days, or, you know, it's always ringing or you're taking a lunch break from work and doing training in your lunch break, turn your phone off. Leave it in the house, go and train in the garden for 10 minutes. Focus your energy into your training and nothing else so you're not getting distracted. Try and get whatever it is, whatever it takes you, try and get in that headspace. For me, it's turning my phone off. It may be that you physically you know, shut the door to your office or you go outside to a nice, calm place. Try and get your head into the right space for training so that you can think of training and nothing else. Forget all of the shit of everyday life and immerse yourself in the here and now, this moment right now where I'm training my dog and focus on nothing but you and your dog. This isn't necessarily going to come naturally. It's not going to happen instant. You might have to practice this. It may be, as we know, practice makes perfect. It may be that the first few times you go, this is really hard to just focus on this and nothing else. Stay with it two or three times. By the fifth or sixth time of going, I am getting rid of my emotions. I'm focusing my energy. I am here and now with my dog training. By the time you've done that a few times, it's going to be natural and you're going to easily slide into being completely focused. One thing that I think is really important is to take away the seriousness of training. It should be fun. This is a fun activity, a fun game for you and your dog to play together. It's not about reaching unrealistic goals. It should be fun. Try and think of training as a game. What game are we going to play today? Yes, it has a focus and a task, but it's a game. We're having fun. Laugh smile, have a good time. Simply smiling and choosing to smile can simply lift your mood. So laugh with your dog, smile with your dog, take a cute photo of them and go, you're so cute. That will help lift your mood and get you focused on them. Now, one thing to consider is if you are really not in the right mood, you can't shift your thoughts you can't focus on the here and now. You go, oh, I've had just the utter most worst day ever. Um, I, I'm just not in the mood. It's okay to not train that day. In fact, it's probably better that you don't train. Because if you're rocking up in a brain funk, going, oh, I can't even bother to be here today, but you know, I've paid for the class, I need to be here, or I've set the assignment in my diary, I must train my dog every day, you can't shift those negativities. Is your training session going to be successful? Is it going to be positive? Are you going to get the results you want? Or are your emotions going to take over? It's okay to just slack off that session for the day. Because we want our sessions to be fun and enjoyable for you and your dog. 
I've done it before. Some Thursdays I go, do you know what? I've had one of them days where I just, things go wrong or you know, you're not in the right mood. I'm not doing it tonight. I'm having a week off. Better for me to do that than to get annoyed with my dog when it's not their fault. Um, for me to just not feel it. And then for the little things my dogs do that normally I can overcome and feel happy and positive about to start eating away at me. So it's okay. You have permission to go, I'm not doing it today. It may be that you go, right, once a week, I'm going to go, today's the day. Pick a day, two or three days a week. Go, nope, not today. If you plan to do it every day, you've set that side of time in your diary. So say it's training at home at lunchtime. If you've set it every day, brilliant. If you skip to, doesn't matter. Training, something we talk about a lot, is quality over quantity. It's not how often you do it. It's how well you do it. And for me, I live this all the time because I don't have time to train my dogs as much as I would like to because funnily enough, I'm working. Yes, I train dogs all the time, but I'm training other people how to train their dogs. At the end of the day, I can't be bothered to train mine um, because I've been with people and dogs all day. I'm tired. I don't want to. So on my days off, when I have more energy we train. But when we do train, we train to a high standard and a quality training because I don't have to teach myself what to do. I know what I'm doing. Um, I can do little sessions once, twice a week with each dog, but they are high quality sessions. So the quality beats the quantity. So get out of your mindset that you need to be training every single day with your dog. You must train every single day um, because it's not about the quantity. If you only train twice or three times a week and you do a brilliant session where you get great results, that is better. If you need to skip a session and just go and chill with your dog and cuddle on the sofa, then do it. It's better to do that than to force yourself to train and have a rubbish session. So I say today is all about how we get the best from our session and it is it's not about what treats you get. It's not about, you know, setting your environment up. Obviously, all those things are important and they are another topic for another day. But this is about how your mindset can ensure you get the best from your training session. So think about your emotions and how they can affect you. Um, think about how you can set time aside and set those dates in your diary how to be aware of your emotions and how they affect your training session. Um, and remember to find something that clears your head, whatever it may be, whatever clears your head. It can be something completely random, <laughs> but whatever clears your head, do that before your session and set yourself that goal for that one particular session so that you're clear, you're in the right state of mind and you're focused. The most important thing is if you want to slack off a session for the day, do it. Cuddling on the sofa is equally a bonding, relationship building experience, just the same as it is to train your dog. So if you have got any wonderful tips about the ways you clear your mind and get in the zone, do share them with us. Um, don't forget to like the podcast. You can comment um, any comments you have about this particular episode in the comment on your listening platform. You can click the subscription bell. That means you'll hear about every episode and when it comes available um, and do share the link with a friend if you think they would benefit from um, the podcast have a wonderful week and I will see you all very soon thank you for listening to the dynamic dog owner with me Debbie Potter see you next time